Today, we're gonna cover the do's and don'ts for an interior design consult. All right, so before your first meeting, something that you want to do, check out Pinterest, Instagram, and magazines. I don't know if anyone actually uses magazines anymore, online magazines. Um, but look at interiors that you love and actually figure out like what style you're gravitating towards, even if you don't know what that style is. It's really good to get an idea because when you meet with your interior designer for the first time, you want to have like some kind of idea of what you're looking for so that, so that they're not spinning their wheels and wasting your time trying to figure out what you like. And it's not to say that they can't, you know, eventually get that out of you with all the right questions. Absolutely. But by doing this before you meet with an interior designer, you actually start way ahead of the game because you get to skip all that trying to figure out what you like stuff and actually see oh okay you might not see the theme in a lot of those but they probably would see it so it's a really great way to have that um conversation starter and it's think of it like when you go to a hairdresser and you're you want to cut your hair and you have an idea of what you want it to look like you don't generally just describe it you show them pictures of it so kind of same idea so think of it like that interior designer hairdresser creative trying to make something beautiful from something that you have in your head and unfortunately we're not mind readers i wish we were sometimes trust me but we're not before you meet with an interior designer you need to understand your budget. <laughs> I don't know how many times I can say this. Know how much you want to spend because they could go anywhere from super inexpensive to super, super high end. But, you know, you don't want somebody telling you how much money you do and don't have. Not that an interior designer would do that, but it's part of that beginning conversation where when you can sit down and actually say, what's your budget? How much are you looking to spend? It really helps us as professionals curate design to actually fit within that framework of costing. So if you're looking to do a kitchen remodel and you have $25,000 to spend, that's a heck of a lot of a different kitchen than one that costs $100,000. So, and some people might be thinking $100,000 in a kitchen, that's crazy. Not really if you're going to do, you know, some really high-end um, items and customization. So decide how much you're willing to spend because knowing your budget up front will make sure that when they're designing that space, they're not just thinking about how much you're sp spending on the renovation, but if you're going to have a designer who's going to be with you through that process, what are their design fees look like? How much time do they think they're gonna to need to spend on that? And be able to give you an actual proper budget based on what you have available. And it might also help jumpstart that conversation to, okay, maybe your budget is a little bit small for some of your wish list items, but maybe if you have that conversation, okay, this is how much I have now, what can we do to like today in planning? How far can we get with that budget to, phase two, phase three, you know, maybe building on it over time and saying, you know what, each year I want to do a little bit more. So how much do I need to save? How much am I need to spend? And having that understanding of budget. And then when you have that conversation of budget, you can actually say what your goals are. So maybe your budget doesn't allow for that today, but by an interior designer, understanding what your future goals are, then you can actually start saving for those things too and actually build your budget for future design work that you want to have done. Before your first meeting, what do you want from your interior designer? It's a really important question to ask yourself. There are a wide range of services available. So understanding that before you go into that first consultation meeting really gives you a lot of um, confidence in that meeting that you're having with them to go over all of these things so that you're not confused about anything. And that's really the point of this conversation is that you guys have clarity. You wanna know that when you're going into that meeting that you 
totally know what you're getting out of it. And by going in prepared, it's like having a good business plan. This is your money, you've earned it, and this is your home, which is a very personal space. Some examples of what interior design services are out there. So you could have, you know, low budget, overall suggestions of layouts and design concepts. So that might actually be them just giving you, okay, this is how I would set up your living room. These are some of the ideas for colors. And they might even just do a very quick sketch. It might be something very much just, let's go walk through the house and I will give you my expert opinion on certain things. That's super low budget that you can have a designer do for you. Then there's the creation of floor plans with inspiration images and reference. So I've actually done this quite a bit where I'll meet with a client, we'll have that initial consult, and basically what I do for them is I create a set of floor plans, do all the, well, I do all the measurements of their space, I create a set of floor plans, and I give them all the layouts, and I also source all the products. So if I know that they want to get an entire new living room done, or they want to get a new bedroom done, or they want to work with some of their existing pieces, so then I work in with the measurements and sizing, I lay everything out for them, and then I give them a source sheet. So basically saying, this is all the items, and here's like two or three places and kind of price points. And again, we've talked about budget, right? So kind of understanding where they wanna spend, but this is a very low key interior design service, but really helps you get your space started. And I find this is extremely popular for people who are very comfortable doing everything themselves. They just want somebody to guide them on that path. So having that option, knowing that that's an option, is a good, good place to have that conversation. Another option that designers have is where they're getting into way more detail. So let's say you're looking at a renovation. So we're gonna do floor plans, can furniture layouts, millwork details, um, fully itemized list of furniture that you can purchase, a source, contractors, and basically it's the full construction set and all the information that needs to go with that, but you're still managing the job. So they're not doing the project management side of it. So that's, you know, we're getting up there in cost. There are way more information, way more details. They may still need to be most likely in this situation. You will still have the contractor be able to discuss things with the designer. If there's questions that arise, usually in that case, it would be an additional fee. And that's something that you would work discuss with budgeting. So if you're hiring a designer to do all of the planning, and the design work and creating that for you, but then you're gonna manage the job, you're gonna hire a contractor and they're gonna work off of those. Generally, anything extra wouldn't be included, but of course, you could always bring them back in for a fee. And then we get into like the full kick and caboodle. <laughs> so full scope. So we've got full planning, full design, manage the projects from start to finish. So I think that's what we see on TV a lot. The reality is um, not everybody can afford to do that. But basically, that is, you know, they're not just your interior designer, they're also your project manager. And that's where you're paying, obviously, a lot more to have them see it through to the end. But you get a very tailored, very polished, very completed uh, renovation, basically, right? I haven't gotten into any don'ts yet, but don't worry, they're coming. How to select an interior designer or a firm. So we've got some do's and don'ts on this one. So first, you really wanna check through some of the professional organizations. Some of them would be IIDA, which is International Interior Design Association, Arido, which is specifically for Ontario, um, and then for Canada, we've got IDC, Interior Design Canada. In the US, they have the American Society of Interior Designers, so ACID. There's a bunch of them. It really depends on where you're located, but I think if you Google professional interior design associations, you'll probably find whatever your local compliments are. And also ask your friends. Ask friends and family. A lot of times, um, most of the business that I get is through referrals. So that's through people that I've worked with on certain projects and then they've brought me into other projects. So, you know, it's knowing that they've done good work for somebody else that you know. So that's really powerful and referrals are really, really important. 
here's the don'ts. Don't just hire someone from an ad. Please do not just do that like a Craigslist or Kijiji or Facebook without at least vetting their credentials. I'm not saying don't hire them through there, but I'm saying don't hire them just with that. Like actually look into them. Are they with a professional organization? Do they, do you know anyone that's worked with them? Have you seen any of their work? Do they have referrals, references? All that kind of stuff. You should really look into that. So don't just pick them based on some click of a mouse and you know, somebody on, on the internet because there's a lot of people, which I've talked about, go back to my first video, interior designers versus interior decorators. There's a lot of false things in there that um, people will say they're interior designers, but they're not really. So if you do want to get into those larger scale projects, you want to really make sure that you're hiring a professional. So questions to ask, are they qualified? And by qualified, we're talking about that good old NCIDQ or on their way to it, have a degree in interior design, right? Do they, are they working with a firm that has qualified people in it? Where did they go to school? Did they actually go to interior design school? Because if they didn't, I'd be super questionable. You do not learn interior design on the internet. And I have been Googling interior design and I have seen YouTube videos that say, how I learned it on the internet. No. Uh-uh, that's not a professional, okay? You go to school for interior design. It's technical. There's things you need to know. If you want an interior designer and not an interior decorator, they had to have gone to school. How long have they been in the business? Nothing wrong with someone's junior, but just knowing that they have some experience in history or if they're junior, do they have somebody who's mentoring them that can you know, help them? Um, examples from their portfolio. So this is really big, like seeing past clients and testimonials, seeing what they're able to do. Really good thing for portfolios is seeing that before and after, um, because sometimes you get a space that's really just very light cosmetic work that needs to be done. It was beautiful to begin with and you really didn't do much to change it, but it's the ones where you're, you know, if you're doing, if you want to do a major reno, you're doing a gut job. I just want to get rid of my whole kitchen and I want a whole new kitchen. I want to change my floor plate. I want to change my footprint. I want to blow out walls. So you want to see that they've done work like that because they could very easily get in over their head if they have no experience doing that. Do they belong to a professional organization? So like I said, great starting point, but you know, ACID, Arido, IIDA, these are all really important things like to be a part of a professional organization because they have standards that you have to meet to be a part of those organizations. So you're not just doing whatever the heck you want because you are accountable to that professionalism um, that they've mandated. So they have their own, you know, like I'm with Arito and they have their own mandate for, you know, what we need to do as a professional in the field. And are they registered? So I've already touched on that. Do they have their NCIDQ? That's a really big one, especially in a lot of U.S. states. There are a lot of states that it is a, uh, they have to have an NCIDQ to practice interior design. You do not have to have it as a decorator, but interior design, if you're dealing with construction and you're dealing with very specific drawings and construction, they need to have that. If you're just wanting a console color furniture, you can use a decorator you, or a designer, but you can use a decorator. You don't have to worry about those as much. So think about what do I want done? What's the level that I want to go to with this process? Um, and then make sure that you're picking someone ac accordingly. All right. So what should you have prepared for your consult? You know, take... So you've done all these inspiration boards, take five to 10 images, like your favorite five to 10 and have those ready to show. You can go into more of it, but say you only have a one hour consult to try and curate that time to best fit what you actually want to cover. Try to pick your top five, maybe top 10. By doing that, what it also helps is the designer that you're working with will also be able to ask you questions about these. So let's say you have, you know, five or six images and they're all really different. They might ask, you know, what is it about this image that really stands out? And for you, you might have picked an image, but all you really loved in that image was say the lighting or the colors or the shape of something. Have questions ready for your interior designer. This is really important. You need to find out how much do they charge? 
Do they charge hourly? Are they per square foot? Do they, they'll have a flat fee. So the question is, how much are you gonna cost me? You're allowed to ask that. Sometimes people have a hard time when it comes to the whole money stuff. Always talk about the money right away. Another question you really want to ask your designer is how many revisions are included with the package? This is really important when, especially when you're getting into bigger scale drawings. What will often happen is a designer will come up with a floor plan and they'll have designed it all. And you might be like, Ooh, I really don't like this layout. So they're going to do a revision. Most designers will include two to three revisions because there is a level of, okay, we've got to figure out from our conversations if we're on the same page and make adjustments accordingly. But you do get those clients that sometimes change their mind a little too much. So they just, they don't really know what they're, they want and they're not being very clear with their designer about what they want because it's, it's got to be a give and a take. So then the revisions can just kind of continue. So that's a lot of time. It's a lot of um, CAD work. So there usually is a limit to how many are included for free. And then there's a charge if you want to keep going above and beyond that. Do you have a contract? You want to ask them about their contract. So contracts are really important. It not only protects the designer, but it also protects you because you guys are going into a business exchange. You want to make sure that there is a document that really clearly states what is the responsibility of the designer and to what level and what's the responsibility of the client. And these type of contracts are to protect both parties. So especially when it comes to financing and payment structure and you know, when are they expecting? How much are they expecting? Some of them do require retainers up front. So how, what, this, what is that percentage? Is it 10%? Is it 50%? You know, these are all really important things. It should get into a very detailed level of what services are they providing you and what is not provided or what um, parameters, like things that are outside of this, this contract that could be added, but it's not part of the contract. That's all in there. It should be very detailed and do not sign a contract without reading it, please. Read a contract. You need to read clauses, sub clauses, all those things. Usually interior design contracts aren't, you know, it's not like getting a cell phone carrier contract. It's usually one to two pages generally is what I've seen typically here. That being said, read your contract and take your time, take it, sit on it. Don't feel like you have to sign anything right away. If you have questions about the contract, ask those questions. And something else that you gotta think of when it comes to contracts. If there's a dispute between the designer and the client, make sure that you ask them how that's handled. It should be written in the contract. There should be some verbiage around it, but basically, Hmm, what's a good example? Okay, an example would be an unauthorized purchase of an item. So let's say you're doing your living room and the designer's actually being hired to purchase all the pieces, but you want to have the signing authority to say yay or nay, which is pretty typical before something gets purchased and gets finalized. So you wanna make sure that if for some reason that's not clear and they go ahead and purchase something based on what they perceive to have been approved, but you hadn't approved it, how do you deal with that, right? So again, it's a financial, potential financial loss there. So you wanna have a lot of those conversations once you've read through the contract. So make notes as you read the contract if there's anything, anything that you're not sure about. All right, so what don't you need to do for your consult? Do not show up with no ideas or no questions about your space. I mean, if you want to have a good experience with your designer, come prepared. Be explicitly clear on your thoughts and your ideas. So don't show up expecting the designer to tell you what you want, right? If you want your designer to create a space that you love, you need to help them with that process because they can't read what's in here and they are gonna take all of those ideas that you have and they're gonna funnel it and create a really good package for you, but you need to give them something to work with, right? Like when you're just 
having them spitball ideas out. I mean, there's just so many things out there. So like to get the best bang for your buck, give them as much to start on as possible. All right, another really big don't. Do not pay for anything until you have a contract with exception of the consult fee. So some designers charge a consult fee. Some designers don't charge a consult fee. It really depends on where you're at. Besides that fee, which should be fairly minimal to spend an hour with somebody having that conversation to talk about all of these things that we've just been covering, you don't pay for anything. You do not hand over a check without a signed contract, okay? That's really important. Contracts are there to protect you as much as they are to protect the designer. You guys need to have a contract in place before you start giving any money. All right, so some things that you should expect and some things not to expect. So do you expect your interior designer to ask you a lot of questions? They want to make sure that they're gathering as much information to create the space that you want. Do not expect your interior designer to show up with plans. They're not going to show up with anything ready to go. This is a consult meeting. This is a get to know each other, get the vibe going. Like, let's figure out what you like and if I can provide that for you. It's It goes both ways, right? All right. Do expect your designer to give you the options that are available through their firm or through them if they're just an individual person that does this full time or on the side. Don't expect an interior designer to give you a lot of ideas for your space in your consult. Do expect your designer to review pricing and payment structure. This should be really one of the main things that you're gonna go over. Do not expect your designer to rearrange your furniture or tell you where things should go. Again, you may pay them for that at another time or you may decide that that's all you wanna do and it might grow into that throughout that meeting, but don't expect it. Do not expect your designer to rearrange furniture or to tell you where to put things. Do expect to review your contract details with your designer. Do not expect your design consult to be free now, your design consult may be free. I think I've already touched this, but don't expect it to be free. Do expect to do a walkthrough of the space and they may potentially take photos to help, you know, move to the next step if you guys are going to sign a contract and all that stuff. So definitely, it's not something they necessarily will do, but do expect it so that you're prepared that they may want to take some photos. Don't expect them to spend more than an hour with you. Uh, generally, it's a predetermined um, kind of time you, that you spend with them for the consult. Unless you have already booked a site measure with them because you are going to, you know, go through the contract, sign the contract, and then do a site measure because they're already there. Different story. I've done that when I do some of my smaller ones. So we've kind of already determined like, you know, the first 60 minutes might be, you know, this much, but then the site measure is a different fee. And we've already discussed that but don't expect them to spend more than an hour, typically 60 to 90 minutes. So the interior design consult is really just the first step of the process. This is a process that's, it's designed to help you achieve the space that you've always wanted. And it's really, it's that fact gathering, that research portion of them getting to know you, getting to know what you like, getting to know what you want out of this experience. So a consult, it's just the very, very beginning stages of the entire design process. So working with a professional interior designer is gonna really save you some time and money. Basically, they're gonna be able to help you get that vision that you have into reality and all the steps in between and how to get there. The consult is just the first step in realizing that vision and how that vision is going to actually formulate into a project. When you work with an expert, they're able to help avoid many of those costly mistakes that tend to run into when they do DIY. An interior designer, because they do deal with us on a regular basis, they're able to help create a plan for you and execute that plan with with precision and accuracy that 
you know, uh, somebody who may be very design intuitive or have a lot of really great ideas, but doesn't really understand that process of having it happen, they will really help pull it all together for you and make sure that the money that you're spending is used really wisely instead of you just kind of figuring it out as you go because that tends to cost a little bit more. So do a consult, know your budget, have those conversations, sign the contract. Hopefully it's on your way to a really amazing project. All right, guys. So again, it's Anya from Interior Design Hub going over today with you interior design consults and what to expect, the do's and the don'ts. I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you liked it, please hit the like button. Please subscribe to my page. And also question of the day, what design tip do you guys want to know? Ask in the comments below. And I look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye.